How have you actually been telling your friends and family about this movie and what it's about? Because I think this is one of those, the less you know about the second and third act, the better. I've just been saying it's about love <laughs> and food. <laughs> <laughs> Two things we need to survive <laughs> in the world. Yeah, I, something similar. I've just sort of been saying, I guess it's sort of, you know, a, a, a girl meets boy um, thriller. <laughs> That's kind of one way of going, going about it. Yeah, it's definitely a hard one yeah. to describe. A girl meets a, a boy and then never leaves. <laughs> what was it like, though, when you guys got the script? Because... Did your agents or managers or people involved tell you what was going to happen? Or did they say, you just need to read this? Mine just said, you just need to read this. They kind of gave me a little warning. They were like, it gets quite dark, that, but that was sort of all they gave me. Um, so yeah, it, it was. I kind of came to it the way you did, which is, I, I think, the best way. And, and reading it, I was just like, what? <laughs> like, you know, every time you think you know what's happening, um, it takes such a, a twist and turn, you know. I'd met with Mary Perrin earlier, about six months before we started, and then she kind of gave me an idea. She didn't say anything about what he actually did, um, but I had a bit of an idea. And then, and then when I was reading it, I went in there with all these expectations. And then for the beginning of the movie, I keep getting all these funny moments and this banter and interaction and then I'm kind of like okay like I'm, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop and then when it finally does it, it still caught me by surprise even though I knew to expect something so we hope people will feel that same drop as we did I guess oh a hundred percent um have you guys seen the movie Ex Machina for not an incredible movie I'm, I'm going movie. somewhere I'm going somewhere with this. So Ex Machina is one of my favorite bits in that movie is the dance scene, Oscar with everyone dancing. I and I judge That's... every movie after that has a dance scene against Ex Machina. So I'm just curious, when you guys were dancing in this, did you feel that pressure? We need to beat Oscar? I'm joking around, but you know. I know we both love that song. Oh, we? yeah. I mean, Saturday night. It's such a tune. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but Mimi had this idea of us kind of at the end of the movie, sort of getting synchronized in this dance thing. And, and, and I remember we, we had both been so worried about kind of keeping the, the movie and the characters as grounded as possible. It's like, how could, the, how could we get to that moment? But I have to say, we, we had rehearsals and then kind of, it, it's just sort of found its way there. Mm -hmm. The thing is, like, I would imagine, and, and I don't know this, but are you more nervous to film something where you're dancing than even some of the harder camera moves? Just because dancing is like, you know, you're, it's, it's I could never do the dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, one of our second, no, our second day filming together was the dancing on that, like, that second was my day. Favorite, Steve. That was so fun. Yeah. You know, the, the one with, because that was all kind of improvised and it was sort of us looking at each other being like, what's your move? That's where the <laughs> hip thrust <laughs> came out. And it's like, I'm like, oh, I just know how to do the shoulder You're thing. good at the shot. That's your, that's your little thing. But, but the one at the end needs to be, you know, focused and determined but and that was nice because it was a bit more choreographed so you know Mimi, Mimi our director had a ha, has a background in dance so she had a very specific idea of what she wanted and so that was sort of quite nice because we felt safe and like I guess I'll just I'll, I'll do these moves and hope they, yeah. <laughs> they look good something that also is really cool about the film is you have these really upbeat 80s songs playing against really, really dark stuff. And it's like, it, it, the film does such a great job with tone and being able to balance these things. Can you sort of talk about, I, I guess, the, the music and also it's bright lit scenes with really fucked up stuff? Sorry for my language. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, that was in the script and, and it was something that kind of intrigued me about the character because I, I saw that as an opportunity in a way to, to, for us to sort of see something very different than what we've, what we've been seeing about him to that point in the movie. And just him in these private moments kind of dancing by himself were so, they were funny, but like they were weird and also kind of revealing about who he was or he might have been in a way. So I thought that was just a very um, different way of telling backstory about a character. Um, and then, of course, there was the one on the, on the operating table. I love it when um, when films do that because y you find yourself laughing or you find yourself 
enjoying something and then it's almost like you feel guilty about it because you realize what you're watching like it really does like that kind of tone like I find so enjoyable because yeah it, you're it sort of makes you feel all the more uncomfortable weirdly because you shouldn't really be enjoying what you what you're watching because it's so dark and so it kind of yeah it means that you're always feeling slightly unsettled which I, I think is really good one of the other things about this film is and I can't believe I'm going to say this but it actually it's it's far-fetched but it's not that far-fetched i actually think the disturbing part is this could be happening um i, I mean maybe i'm reaching on this but it's just uh did you guys even think about that or am i really reaching with this well you have jeffrey dahmer right who who really did eat his victims i mean and um so and and that was one of the things that i was sort of dead set on is i i wanted to go back and kind of look at every serial killer in the last three decades, I mean, you, you know, Ted Bundy, then you have like the Green River one, and I mean, and it's terrifying, because like, you realize how many of these people, how many of these serial killers hunted women for the last like three, four decades, like all going back to the 60s, and so it's just, so it's, it's, and, and yeah, so it's not unheard of. I gotta wrap it just real fast. Anything that you think soon to be fans of the movie would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the film? Noah's pink dress um, was steamed every single time. <laughs> oh, it was. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we were saying, but oh, yeah. they're in a fight now. And still, still it was steamed. Still it, it was, was not steamed. a wrinkle on that dress. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm only saying that because I think, I, I don't, I, it, we were always looking at each other with Mimi and going like, I wonder if this is going to become like a weird iconic Halloween costume or something mm. one day because you know the, the the pink dress and it kind of does have that aura about it like other older movies that we've seen you know when you kind of recognize so yeah and you with the eye like the eye coming out <laughs> the bulging eye the yeah. bulging eye I mean like, Sebastian having to go that's a <laughs> pretty strong hit I'm like I thought it was just a and then they're like no she hit you with a meat grinder I'd say <laughs> It would do some damage. And I was like, okay. I, uh, yeah. The eye. Just like terrified. My eye would never like come back. Like, <laughs> you can't really stop by that. <laughs> yeah. I got to stop there, but I really mean it. Congrats on the movie. You guys did such a great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, man. Good to see Thanks. you. Thanks. Have a great day.